Hello. Well, continuing from uh, my last uh, little video chat, where we talked about spirit, and what that actually means to people outside of spiritualism. It might seem a strange term. Um, I decided that uh, perhaps some uh, words from spirit guides uh, given through mediumship would be appropriate for another little video. And uh, I mentioned in the previous one, uh, spirit guides of people like Ivy Northage, wonderful medium, Chan, and uh, Grace Cook, another wonderful medium, founder of the White Eagle, um, and her guide, of course, and everything. Uh, we mustn't forget, of course, Maurice Barbonell and Silver Birch. And uh, there's also uh, Iconoclast, as they, they deem to call themselves when I pressed um, the group of, of guys with whom I work. So I thought um, I'd uh, read some of their answers to you. Um, you might be interested and I'm sure if you've, if you've uh, read or heard them before uh, you don't mind listening again. And uh, this one is from this book of uh, Spirit Guides, Iconoclast, Questions with Answers Through Transmediation. And of course the thing is that we, so we are as we are, so we attract. And uh, sometimes I, it's very interesting to see the sort of difference in attitudes and, and um, uh, delivery uh, from one group to the next group. And uh, I'll start off with my group then. And uh, they were asked, how would you explain the Great Spirit to children? Uh, following on from my last uh, video. And they said this, little children could be said to live in a state of grace, owing to their proximity to the source of their life. They have as newly incarnated spirit to the earth plane, an innocent and happy acceptance of their life in the physical sense that they feel themselves to be participants in as children grow older. In conscious earth years so they begin to question both how they came to be born here and the bigger question that remains with them until they eventually rec reclaim that spirit land from whence they came why they are here this searching for that answer should result at least in an inkling of an omnipresent and omniscient source of life it has been very difficult to separate the images that have been made of that source which are invariably physical depictions of men, women, birds and beasts, from the irreality as we and those of you who are so enlightened know to be a lake of love and light, the truth, and how can we tell children what love, light and truth looks like? It has always been easier to refer to a God who looks like any other human being and in most cases is a representative of just a section of humanity. We who are of spirit alone have no colour, hair type and dare we say gender, although we have the experience and knowledge that our physical lives afforded us in our eternal progress. Better to tell our children of the earth that they are children of the light of love and truth absolute and that this great spirit is all pervading of themselves, ourselves, yourselves and is all around outside too. If children have this fact explained to them after their first forgetting, this world in which they dwell will deal more kindly with all of them until their ultimate return, so that the children shall suffer not. Amen. Well, that's what they said about that. And uh, then we have, um, I have here the, a book called Spiritual Realisation uh, that was communicated to Ivy Northage by her spirit guide Chan on this book that was published by the, the London College of Psychic Studies that I lectured at in fact once upon a time uh, they call it a spiritual guide uh, we call them spirit guides don't we we're not frightened of that so let's uh, read you something from them uh, see if, if he can give something not too long because uh, we only have a finite amount of time down here this seems to go on for rather a long time. Uh, so, uh, looking quickly through, I can't find anything short. So, um, I'll just read you a little passage from uh, this. It's called The Purpose of Suffering. And this is from Chang. 
suffering is so much a part of this earthly existence that to try to understand its place must, int must surely help us to deal with it more effectively and patiently. What promotes suffering and why do apparently innocent people have to endure it when on the surface there seems to be no reason for it? Suffering is an essential part of spiritual growth. If this sounds as if it is an unnecessarily harsh part of earthly experience and you find it difficult to equate it with an all-loving God, just think for a moment. This God force is part of ourselves. We're not separate from God. This God power is manifesting through our present state of spiritual involvement. Evolvement. This is why it is so important to have a basic conviction of survival because without this nothing else has any meaning. If you are doubtful as to the continuity of existence, if you are doubtful that there is anything to follow death, then you cannot have any proper concept of the true meaning or purpose of life itself, including suffering. This is important, so even if you are not fully convinced of survival, will you for this discussion accede that we at least have experienced that it is so? We know that we cannot die, and that there is an existence that, that is an in instantaneous continuation after you have left behind this physical envelope. We can understand the significance and importance of this in relation to a hereafter, but it also has tremendous impact and importance in daily life, in that it provides meaning and purpose in that life. And since, as I have said, suffering is such an essential part of that existence, then suffering must have an explanation and purpose. You can accept your own divinity in the assurance of the continuity of life, in that the indestructible part of you is part of God, and you can translate that conviction upon many levels of interpretation and expression in your own personal experience. This now is where truth has to give way to a certain amount of personal conjecture, in that within the, in the confines of a physical body we are unaware of our own particular spiritual status. Externally, there is nothing to show that the person beside you is any more spiritually advanced than you are yourself. Many degrees of spiritual involvement are manifesting within a community or society with no external signs to show that this is so. We can only therefore measure progress by the behaviour or attitude of mind of the individual. We cannot always assess what is a good or not so good attribute. In that much is not obvious or apparent especially in a cursory association. But if we pursue this line of thought, we would find that the people who are usually the most tolerant, the most compassionate, the most kindly disposed towards their neighbour are almost without exception people who have had a great deal of personal suffering there. So that is what Chan had to say. And as you know, I mentioned White Eagle and... Um, the interesting thing is, you see, that the meditations that I would give to my students were given to me by those upstairs uh, to tell them, to guide them. But they, they, anybody who sat in my circles will know that they're, they're not exactly like these meditations that were given by White Eagle. Uh, again, we're talking about uh, like, attracting like in spirit and uh, all the various spirit workers over there on the spirit side of life in groups work with people to whom they are drawn uh, rather than the other way around. You know, we would all like to have these sort of what people call ascended masters. I mean, you know, I, I think uh, we can assume that, that uh, those who have evolved beings in the world of spirit are who they are. They don't need to be given special titles and... Uh, here we are. There's, there's one here, for instance, uh, receiving the divine essence. Uh, well, how about the healing power of music? We, we could, we could, we could have that in the next few minutes. Um, perhaps not because some people are deaf, and, and that's that's an annoyance, isn't it? <laughs> to say the least. Talking about suffering, uh, we won't have those, that. So. Well, I'm blowed. There is purpose in suffering. Let's compare. You may be sad because of the sufferings of those you love. It is very hard to have to remain still to be unable to do anything. Whenever you witness suffering of the body or of the mind which you are unable to heal, try to remember that the sufferer is working through a condition of life which will eventually bring the soul into the light. 
so it is your work ever to hold your beloved friend or dear one. That light, that hope, that courage, which will help his or her soul make good. We assure you that what we call the Great White Spirit is a God of infinite love and tenderness, and every child of God is ordained to go through experiences on earth that will bring it into the happiness and peace for which it longs. We give you this message as one of hope and to comfort you, for what takes place in the personal life, in the individual and particular life, is taking place too in the collective life. That which you see in the world which appears painful is the way that the race must travel. That which you see in the personal suffering of someone is the way that that particular soul must travel until healing comes. It is not easy at first to trust and to hold fast to the inner light and truth of the heart. The body seems so solid, heavy and intractable and the mind so wayward. But the mind must become the tool of the spirit and the substance of the body can be lightened, refined and uplifted by aspiration and by your love and devotion to God. This constant dwelling in the presence of God will come to mean more to you than anything else in your life. Seek you first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Divine intelligence is just that, perfect and true, and can make no mistake. But while God's law is exact, there is also the mercy of God, the loving wisdom which softens the karma the soul makes for itself, and uses it to bring ultimate blessing to the soul. Uh, so I think that... Uh, oh, and says trust enables you to let go and let God trust yourself as a child of God loved lovable and lovely no matter what has happened in your life nothing can destroy that love of the father mother for you as you enter meditation with this thought you may relax even the cells of the body can begin to relax their tension their fight for life and come back to harmony let God do the work for you there that's the white eagle and you see, so they all say the same thing in different ways. Absolutely fascinating, isn't it? This spiritualist way of life. I thoroughly recommend it to you. And uh, I have here a little, a little booklet, an American booklet, because uh, modern spiritualism began in America in 1848, as I'm sure many of you know. And uh, this was from the Reverend Victoria Barnes, M.D., and uh, she says, what is spiritualism, a medium, a healer? And I'll just leave you with her words. Spiritualism is the science, philosophy and religion of continuous life based upon the demonstrated fact of communication by means of mediumship with those who live in the spirit world. Spiritualism is a science because it investigates, analyzes and classifies facts and manifestations demonstrated from the spirit side of life. Spiritualism is a philosophy because it studies the laws of nature both on the seen and unseen sides of life and bases its conclusions upon present observed facts. It accepts statements when sustained by reason and by result of observed facts of the present day. Spiritualism is a religion because it strives to understand and to comply with the physical, mental and spiritual laws of nature which are the laws of God. A spiritualist is one who believes as the basis of his or her religion in the communication between this and the spirit world by means of mediumship and who endeavours to mould his or her character and conduct in accordance with the highest teachings derived from such communion. There. Um, <laughs> so I think that probably wraps up our little uh, inspired uh, chat uh, today. I hope you've enjoyed that and I hope that it's uh, inspired you to have a look around and find some more uh, books, articles, um, videos. Uh, now we're in this um, <clears throat> uh, technological age uh, that will actually bring you more knowledge and more understanding of what us spiritualists understand and know. And uh, it can only help you. I absolutely uh, am convinced of that to tell you that it will help you on your life's pathway at whatever stage you're at at the moment. So I say God bless to you. And I hope that you find uh, your pathway through life is uh, blessed with the light and love and truth of the Great Spirit. God bless you.